Good afternoon. Welcome to Saints Peter and Paul. Please join us in our opening hymn, What a Beautiful Name. of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries when I'll call to mind our sins. And we apologize to God using the following prayer. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
on this third Sunday of Easter, we pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, the second person of the Trinity, who lives and reigns with you, Father and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life, you will make me full of gladness with your presence. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
a reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father the one who judges each person impartially according to each one's deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. Christ was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about 11 kilometers from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe 
all that the prophets have declared? Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. These were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today is the third Sunday of the Easter season. There are three S's that I would like to go through with you today. The first S is what I just mentioned, season. The second S is spirit, and the third S is serenity. The first S, the season of Easter. Many Catholics are not aware that Easter is not just one day or one Sunday, where we declare Jesus is risen from the dead. It's now time to go home, eat chocolate, or whatever else I gave up for Lent. No, Easter is actually a season that's made up of 50 days, seven weeks between Easter and Pentecost. That's why today is called the third Sunday of Easter. Next week, the fourth Sunday of Easter. There are six Sundays of Easter, followed by the Sunday of the Ascension of the Lord, ending with Pentecost Sunday. As an aside, the word Pentecost means 50 in Greek. That's where the 50 days comes from. During the season of Easter, the church changes the readings of all the masses, both weekdays and Sundays. Rather than reading from the Old Testament for the first reading, as we are accustomed to in the rest of the liturgical year, for the 50 days between Easter and Pentecost, we read from the Acts of the Apostles, often just called Acts, which is the fifth book in the New Testament. During the 50 days, we will read a daily Mass from each chapter of Acts, from chapter 1 to chapter 28. I recognize that most Catholics don't read their Bible, so they may not be familiar with Acts. Just a few facts that you should know. Acts and the Gospel of Luke make up a two-part work, as they have the same author. The Gospel of Luke tells how Jesus fulfilled his plan for the world's salvation through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth, the promised Messiah. Acts continues the story of Christianity after the resurrection of Jesus, giving us a unique view of the journey of the early church. Now, if you pay attention, there is a clear change in the apostles presented in Acts. Suddenly, after Pentecost, filled with the Holy Spirit, the followers of Jesus go from doubt to determination, from confusion to conviction, and from fear to faith. Last week in the Gospel reading, which is pre-Pentecost, we read about doubting Thomas. Today, in the Gospel, we hear of two confused disciples who are running away with fear of the authorities after the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. They run into Jesus Christ, and he walks them along a journey to the point of faith. This fear, confusion, and doubt 
that we read about in the Gospels, which is again pre-Pentecost, is in direct contrast to the determination, conviction, and faith that we read about in Acts of the Apostles, which is post-Pentecost. For example, in today's reading from Acts, we read about a transformed people, Peter, who went from denying Jesus three times. I don't know him. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know him. He goes from that person to a person that we read today stands with the eleven, raises his voice, and addresses the crowd. And he says this, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. He goes from a frightened sheep to a roaring lion. In Acts, we read about the journey of Peter in the first half and Paul in the second half. Paul is also transformed from a persecutor of the church to one of the greatest evangelists. As most of you are aware, we are all currently going on a journey called COVID-19. There is doubt, there is confusion, and there is fear. We are looking for a solution. The solution is already there. The solution is in us, as it was in Peter and in Paul. This brings us to the second S, the Spirit. The working of the Holy Spirit is prominent in Acts. There are 56 references to the Holy Spirit in the book. The Holy Spirit appears so prominently in Acts that the book has been called the Gospel of the Holy Spirit. Luke's favorite term in both his Gospel and Acts for describing the impact of the Holy Spirit is describing the person as being filled with the Spirit. If you pay attention, as I've already mentioned, filled with the Holy Spirit, the followers of Jesus go through a transformation. Doubt to determination, confusion to conviction, fear to faith. The world is currently handing us doubt, confusion, and fear during this pandemic. The Holy Spirit allows us to deal with this. We have to come to a deeper awareness of God the Holy Spirit in us, that power in us. Now the problem is that most Catholics never read their Bible, and they don't really get the role of God the Holy Spirit. This is not their fault. It is important to know for each and every one of us that we are somewhat limited by something that happened 500 years ago. I'm going to give you a little bit of a history lesson about 500 years ago that has impacted all of us. 500 years ago, the Catholic Church was going through a particularly difficult time of corruption. The Church has always gone through corruption and correction, corruption and correction. 500 years ago, we were going through a particularly difficult time of corruption. And an invention happened called the printing press, so that the Bible could be printed rather than copied. People could have their own copy of the Bible. And the result was that a group in Europe started reading their Bible. And they started saying to the Catholics, that is how you know Jesus Christ, through the Bible. That is the means to Jesus Christ. You are corrupt, we are leaving you. The Catholics reacted very badly to this. I call it the divorce. Officially, it's called the Protestant Reformation. And the Catholics reacted badly and said, no, the Mass, the sacraments are the way to Jesus Christ. There was a fight. And ultimately what ended up happening is they separated from us. And you ended up with two Christian churches. The Orthodox and the Catholic Church are very close. And both emphasize the sacraments. The Protestants the Bible. Later, a third group came up called the Pentecostals, which ended up emphasizing God the Holy Spirit. And they said to us, you're missing the most important piece to come to know Jesus. The Protestants said, the Bible is the most important piece. The Catholics, which most of us have been influenced by, said, no, the Mass, the sacraments are the most important piece. In fact, the Catholics said, the Catholic Church said, if you don't go to Mass, you are one of them. And unfortunately, the result is, because of that, many Catholics didn't read their Bible. 
The Pentecostals said, no, the Holy Spirit is the most important piece. Because the Holy Spirit allows you not only to read your Bible and love your Bible, but to live your Bible. Not only attend the sacraments, but become a sacrament. And so they said, that's the most important piece. So the three pieces, the three means to Jesus got separated. That is why most Catholics don't read their Bible and don't know God the Holy Spirit because the Bible is considered a Protestant thing and the Holy Spirit a Pentecostal thing. It is important that the three elements, the three means to Jesus come together. And this is an excellent opportunity during these 50 days for us to become complete. Essentially, that's what the Second Vatican Council said in the 60s. Bring the three pieces together. Catholics, read your Bible. Don't just participate in the sacraments, but become a sacrament, a visible sign of God's invisible reality. And get to know God, the Holy Spirit, the power, the flame that allows you to live this out genuinely. My hope is that during the 50 days of the Easter season, you will read Acts of the Apostles in the Bible and discover in a deeper way the role of God the Holy Spirit in our daily lives. What can God the Holy Spirit do for us in our daily life? Well, this leads us to the third S, serenity. Serenity is defined in the dictionary as the state of being calm, peaceful, and untroubled. Isn't that what we all want today? Calm, peaceful, and untroubled. I would ask you to say a special prayer. It combines two great prayers. One prayer is three simple words. Come, Holy Spirit. One of the oldest Catholic prayers. The next prayer is the serenity prayer. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference. That is a great prayer to God the Holy Spirit. Most Catholics aren't accustomed to praying to God the Holy Spirit. That is a great prayer. I'll repeat it. Come, Holy Spirit, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. We may not be able to change what's going on out there in the world, but we can change what's in here. That we can change. Now, I'm going to give you four ways that you can connect the Holy Spirit to serenity in your life. First, in the description of the video is a link to a series of videos of the Holy Spirit and Acts of the Apostles. I encourage you to check it out and watch it as a family. Second, starting this Wednesday at 7 p.m., Vlad Mamoradlo, the lay youth pastor of the parish, will be doing a series of five one-hour talks on how the Holy Spirit can help us through these challenging times. By studying the Acts of the Apostles, he will talk about how the Holy Spirit leads us from fear to faith, from confusion to conviction, from doubt to determination, from disappointment to direction, and from grief to grace. The series will have a one-hour talk on Facebook, followed by a group chat over Zoom. Third, I want you to know that the Catholic Church has a counseling branch. You may have never heard of it, but it exists. Whenever I have a case that involves the need for professional counseling, I refer people to, organi to an organization called Catholic Family Services, or CFS for short. I want you to know that counseling over the phone is available from Catholic Family Services during COVID, free of charge. If you or someone you know are having difficulty coping at this unusual time, please call 416-222-0048. Again, 416-222-0048. Or email Catholic Family Services at info at cfstoronto.com info at cfstoronto.com. Leave your name, number, and a message, and they will get back to you within 24 hours. Please note that when they call you back, your phone will show unknown or private number. Fourth, starting today at 6 p.m., we will begin showcasing a series of episodes from a, short, from a new show called Chosen. 
It presents the story of Jesus from the perspective of those who are transformed by him. For example, Mary, his mother, Mary Magdalene, Peter, and Thomas. I would encourage you to tune back at 6 p.m. with your family. Get some popcorn ready and watch it with us. Moreover, tell your families and extended family to view it as well. People may not accept an invitation to Mass in the usual time, but they may accept an invitation to watch Chosen. Help them to do so. Here is a trailer of the series. Excuse me. I have something for you. For me. Throw this down for a catch. Uh, I don't have a quarrel with you, teacher. But we've been doing this all night. Nothing. All right. here is incredible. Everything that grows here is immaculate. Except for the people. You're such a miserable lot. You worship one God, and yet you're all divided. Only one language keeps their peace. None to speak it. You are the great Nicodemus. And I serve only God. Yes. Yes, so do your enemies. Rogue preachers in the wilderness, raving about a coming Messiah. Simon, you're scared. I've lost everything. Burned every bridge. If I don't catch a ton of fish or get some help somehow, they'll arrest me. I'm trapped. No more talking, Simon. Maybe God can get your attention now. Who are you? Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. I saw him. It was incredible. You have experienced a miracle. You are healed. What do you want from me? Follow me. He performs miracles and seeks no credit? Who did this? I don't know his name. His time for men to know has not yet come. We've, we've waited for you for so long, we believe. You have much bigger things ahead of you, Simon, son of Jonah. Anything is possible now, don't you see? Would you at least know him if you saw him again? <laughs> I will know him for the rest of my life. <laughs> the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear our humble petitions. We pray for Pope Francis and all the pastors of the Catholic Church 
that they may continue to nourish us with God's word from the scriptures. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish community, that we may renew our commitment to show compassion, love, mercy, and forgiveness in our dealings with our family, neighbors, and particularly with those who may have injured or offended us. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the people in the world who are suffering from coronavirus, and particularly for those who are in intensive care and in nursing homes. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the victims and the families of the Nova Scotia shooting, that they may find comfort in this very trying time. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all men and women who serve in harm's way to provide essential goods and services to all of us, that the Lord bless them and their families with safety in their work and reward their personal sacrifices with success in their labors. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. As we take steps to protect ourselves and others physically from the spread of COVID-19, let us also remember to turn to God for protection and healing. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who died this week, including Reverend Carlo Della Vecchia, Reverend Francis Hainan, Reverend, Reverend Alphonse de Vac, and Simon Ziarati. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the intentions of all who are joining, joining us remotely in today's Mass. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, guide us by the power of the Holy Spirit that we may journey this time between Easter and Pentecost, always coming to a deeper awareness of what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who arms themselves to share in our humanity. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Bless you, To you, Lord God, Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my many sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for the good and the good of His holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time of all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
indeed holy, O Lord, the bount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with francis our pope tom collins our bishop and all the clergy Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. In a special way, Manuel Maciel, Ethrina Maciel, Eduarda Maciel, Augusta Maciel, Manuel Raposo, Augusta Raposo, Albano Maciel, El Marind Maciel, Antonia Maria and Vittorio Del Duca, Antonieta Macarone, Filomena Tadeo, Filomena and Florino Villa, Marissa Lodolini, Lucia Macellaio, per tutte le, le anime in purgatorio, Ronald Montalbo and Ed Pilkington. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us ask for Our Lady's protection, especially for the sick and all who care for them. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Before the final blessing, just a quick announcement. Teresa, the parish secretary, has been getting a lot of calls and emails regarding donations to the parish. In the description of this video is a link where you can make an online donation using your credit card. Also, I want to let you know that we have installed a mail slot in the front entrance facing the parking lot. To inquire about pre-authorized giving, email or call the office. We are obviously sensitive that families may be financially limited at this time, and we only ask that you give if you are able. Thank you. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Be may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Please join us in our closing song, Rise.